right, thanks for watching. And previously on our dual space adventure, we defined the dual space of a vector space, which is simply the set of linear transformations from a vector space to let's say R or C or like any field if you'd like. And here's the thing, V star, because it's a set of linear transformations, is itself a vector space. So today, let's do kind of something freaky. Let's define V double star, which is simply the dual of the dual. So definition, V double star, that's just V star star. In other words, the linear transformations from V star to a field. The freaky thing, objects which take functions as its input and spit out numbers. And now, if you think of V star as being a shadow space, you might ask, what is the shadow of a shadow space? And it turns out, mathematically, it's basically the space itself, which actually makes you think, because what this is saying is that you are the shadow of your own shadow. Wow, I know, pretty deep. <laughs> and in fact, here's a theorem. At least for finite dimensional vector spaces, so wrong for infinite dimensions, if V is finite dimensional, then V and V st double star are isomorphic. Isomorphic means pretty much the same. Technically, they're not the same objects because those take super functions and those are just like vectors, but more or less they're the same. And let me give you a proof that's not satisfying and then I'll show you a cooler proof. Why? Because dimension of V double star, well, that's the dimension of V star star. And what have we shown before? We've shown that a vector space and its dual always have the same dimension. That's why this uh, stuff about dual, dual bases is very important. So this is the dimension of V star. And well, I just said V star and V have the same dimension. So V double star and V have the same dimension and they're finite dimensional. So there's this other video I've done where I showed that it follows that they're isomorphic. Now, of course, this proof isn't really satisfying, right? We've shown they're isomorphic and it's nothing new because V star and V are isomorphic. But what I want to show you is they're actually super isomorphic, even better than isomorphic because it turns out there's a really elegant way of going from V to V double star. And this is the point of today. Today's video. Namely, um, as I said, there's a very nice way of going from V to V double star, which if you ever played Legend of Zelda, should remind you of this mirror that brings you from the shadow space back to the real space. Um, and here's the isomorphism. Let's think what it has to be. So we have V and we have V double star. So the input should be a vector. Okay. So input should be X in V and the output should be like a super linear transformation, and which we'll just call x hat. And you'll see in a second why this is useful. So output x hat, which is in V double star, which I'd like to remind you is a linear transformation from V star to F. So in particular, x hat, is a linear transformation from V star to F. In particular, the inputs of F x hat is just F. And now I can tell you the definition. 
what does x hat do at f? Just like the transpose, it flips it. So this is f of x. And in fact, think about this. x hat takes a function and calculates f of x. This is nothing other than evaluation at x. At x. For example, think the vector space is just your real numbers, and x equals 2, then x hat of f just evaluates any function at 2. But here it's in general at x, and if you want, here's a little picture. Again, if you fix x, then what does x hat do? Well, we have v star here, where we have f, and then we have x hat. It indeed is a linear transformation from v star to f, because it just evaluates f at x. But the point is here, x is fixed, but generally x is the input of your isomorphism. And in fact, I'm claiming that this is an isomorphism, surprisingly. And again, this only works for finite dimensional vector spaces. It turns out for infinite dimensions, it's not always an isomorphism. Um, but I think it's always an injective or something. Um, and in particular, so this hat transformation, let's call it like something X, X C, <laughs> and uh, let's show that C is an isomorphism. And by the way, so we use coordinates for Phoebe, we use like matrix attachment for Regina Falange. Well, this is called Ursula. So I'm claiming that this Ursula transformation is an isomorphism. So theorem, if, again, in finite dimensions, V is finite, then Psi from V to V double star defined by Psi of X equals X hat is an isomorphism. So in other words, V and V double star are always isomorphic, but with this very elegant isomorphism. Why is it elegant? Because notice, this does not require bases at all. To show that V and V star are isomorphic, we needed a basis. But here, no basis required. So that's why it's like a super isomorphism. Um, and by the way, Sometimes, in infinite dimensions, this could happen. If this is the case, we'll call V reflexive. So it's a very good vector space. Okay, and let me show why it's an isomorphism. First of all, isomorphism means you have to show it's a linear transformation. So let's show that Psi is linear. But this is a cute calculation. If X and Y are in V, and let's say F, is in V star, then let's see, let's calculate Xi of X plus Cy. Again, it takes a function as its input, so let's say F, and what it does, it, right, it evaluates F at X plus Cy. This is F of X plus Cy. But remember, F is linear. So this is indeed f of x plus c f of y. But that just means you evaluate x at f and you evaluate y at f. Or if you want, flip it and put hats. And just as definition of the sum of two functions, that's x hat plus c y hat at f. But x hat was xi of x plus c psi of y, psi of y. Never know if it's psi or psi, but it's okay. Uh, it's still a linear transformation, uh, independent of my pronunciation. So what do we have? This weird thing applied to f equals this weird thing applied to f. 
since f is arbitrary, we do get that it's linear. x plus c1 equals psi of x plus c psi of y. So it is linear, and also let's show it's one to one. So I have a nice proof of this. So psi one to one. So the proof is suppose x hat equals to the zero function, if you want, the zero functional, and show x equals to the zero vector. All right, and for this, well, let me, because it's finite dimensional and because it you know, might not always be true in infinite dimensions, let's use a basis. So since, let's say beta, let's say v1 up to vn is a basis of v, if you want let beta to be a basis of v, then the point is x, Remember, x is a vector in v. We can write x as a linear combo of v1 up to vn. a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n for some a1 up to a n in your field. And the idea is to take this identity and decompose it in terms of the vi's, so then x hat equals zero, that's the same thing as a1 v1 plus dot 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 plus a n v n hat equals zero. But remember hat is linear, so this is a1 v1 hat plus dot 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 plus a n v n hat equals zero. And again, this is an equality of functions, so of functionals, sorry. So in particular, it means for every f, if you apply this to f, you always get zero. a1 v1 hat plus dot 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 plus a n v n hat at f equals zero for all f in if you want v star, I think. But again, you can just, uh, by linearity, you can decompose that. So a1 v1 hat of f, plus dot 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 plus a n v n hat of f equals zero. And now use a definition of hat, which means you uh, evaluate f at all those things. a1 f of v1 plus dot 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 plus a n f of v n equals zero. And again, the point is, this holds for every f in your dual space. In particular, remember we have this nice basis of functions, uh, of functionals, which are, you know, one somewhere and zero everywhere else. So for example, we have this uh, fi, which is one at vi and zero everywhere else. So remember this is fi, which is one here and then zero everywhere else. In particular, since this is true for every f in V star, let f be f1, which is the functional that's 1 on the first vector, 0 everywhere else. Then we get a1 f1 at v1 plus a2 f1 at v2 plus dot 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 plus a n f1 at v n equals 0. But again, by definition of f1, this is 1 here, this is 0 here. Everything else is 0, so a1 equals 0. And similarly, if you use f2, you get 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So then a2 equals 0. a2 equals 0 etc etc so eventually what you get is that all the ai's are zero but then what does that mean x is zero v1 da, 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 plus zero vn so in other words x is the zero vector so 
then x is 0 a1, v1, plus da, 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 plus 0 vn, which is the zero vector, which is just what we want. So in fact, psi here is 1 to 1, and therefore psi is on to, because simply the dimensions match. So if you have a 1 to 1 linear transformation from two finite dimensional vector spaces of equal dimension, then the linear transformation is on to. And therefore, we do have a nice isomorphism between those two spaces. And I think soon, uh, later I'll give you, a, I guess in the next video, I'll give you a cool consequence of this. All right, I hope you like this. And if you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.